We're going to be looking at the Nokia Lumia 521 smartphone on T-Mobile. This phone is $150. Um, actually, you can get it as low as $130 at Walmart, and that is without a contract. It does do 4G data, um, only it's not LTE. Uh, the fastest you can expect to get on this, uh, theoretical fastest, would be 21 megabit. Uh, you're probably going to get something lower than that. But, you're, I mean, if you're in the this kind of price range of a, of a smartphone, I mean, you, you can't expect it to be the most fastest, amazing <laughs> smartphone. Um, so 150, no contract, T-Mobile. Uh, there's been lots of reviews online for this phone, uh, but I don't really see them kind of comparing, like, why would you want to switch from, let's say, Android over to a Windows phone? Uh, they kind of compare it to other Windows phones or kind of say that it's such a good cheap phone that uh, you should get it just because it's so cheap. Microsoft even has a video out that compares it against the Galaxy S4 saying you should get it because it's so much cheaper. That's not really a fair comparison. The Galaxy S4 is uh, much a much better phone than this. Uh, they're not even in the same league so I don't even understand why they even tried that. But so what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of see why would you want to come to Windows Phone. Uh, many of you won't want to come to Windows Phone. I mean, there's several features that, that they just don't have yet on the, on the phone. But some of you might want to give it a try. And this would be a good device to try it out on because it's $150 or less. Uh, if you go T-Mobile Postpaid, you can get it for $5 a month with $30 down as well. So that makes it even more for affordable. So if you don't know anything about Windows Phone, this big claim to fame, if you will, is live tiles. And almost anything you could do with these live tiles on Android, you could do with gadgets or, or widgets, rather. But, I mean, what basically... You know, put a widget on your home screen and, you know, it, it, you could do pretty much the same thing. It would take a long time to do it, though. I mean, the nice thing about Windows Phone is it's really quick to set up. So, you know, I have all these tiles on here that quickly tell me the weather, tell me if I have an email, uh, you know, tells me that I have my alarm set tomorrow at 7. You know, it's a real quick way to see what's going on. Unfortunately, there's not a way, like, to see all your notifications, at least not yet. Uh, that may be coming, but in order to see like what is pending out there, some, like an app wants to notify you, you need to have it on your home screen, and and it needs to support the notification on its individual live tile. There's no like drag down like Android and see see your your notifications. Um, so it, it, just kind of going a little bit more about maybe cons of this phone. We'll try to hit those quick, and then why you do want to use the phone after that is. Uh, no flash on the on the um, camera, five megapixel camera. Not that great of a camera. Some people say it's a great camera. Uh, well, for the price, it's a great camera. No, it is not a great camera. It's passable, but if you're a person that wants to uh, take all kinds of pictures with your phone and and don't carry a point and shoot camera with you or anything like that, uh, don't get this phone. Camera's not great. It's passable. Uh, screen is pretty good. It's not amazingly bright with no flash um, and a non-bright screen. If you want to use a flashlight app, it's not going to work out too great. I mean, obviously, you can't use flash because there's none there. If you make the screen completely white, it's not so great. So, but for a $150 device, the screen is fine. Uh, screen is 800 by 480 pixels. Uh, nothing special. Um, Nothing, you know, it's it's good. It's it's stuff's pretty clear. It's not an HD screen, but again, it's a, a cheaper device. Viewing angles aren't great. Um, they show up a lot better on camera than they do when you're looking at it yourself. It's pretty good. Um, you're always going to be looking at your phone straight on anyway when you're trying to do stuff on it. So I mean, I don't see what the big deal is on the on the um, view screen. The there's no illuminated buttons down here. Again, not that big of a deal. You kind of get used to where the, the buttons are. Um, let's see here. There's no compass in here. Uh, that doesn't mean GPS won't work. It just means that uh, if there's a specific app that needs a compass, like I don't know if you've ever seen like a video where they like, they like have their camera going and they're like, ooh, look, I can pan this around and it'll show me the names of every store around me and everything as you pass it and stuff. You need something like the compass like that. There's other apps that use compass, uh, compass 
So if you need a compass, don't get this phone because there's just not one there. Of course, Windows Phone, it uh, has a lack of apps. It has pretty much most of the, the big apps, but you know, your bank might not have an app or you know, something like Sirius XM is not on there if you're a satellite radio uh, person. Um, so, you know, just make sure to see if the apps that you must have are on the Windows uh, Store. Uh, they, you know, they're the must-have apps, hopefully there, but check it because it, you might have an app that you just got to have that might not be out there. And there's just, it's just the, the apps are slow coming. I think they'll get better over time, but I wouldn't buy it betting your app's going to come later. Make sure it's there now or else you might kind of regret it. Uh, another quick thing. Always, when you first start up on the phone, um, if you have an Xbox 360 gamer tag or an Xbox Live gamer tag, uh, sign in with the email address associated with the gamer tag. There is no way to switch your sign in for the Xbox app. It's actually not really the Xbox app. It's called Games. Um, <laughs> Well, I, I signed up with a different email address and it created an avatar and a gamer tag for me and I was like, I already have this. So I had to factory reset the phone and re-enter in uh, my email address or actually enter in a different email address, the email address I use for my Xbox, which is just kind of like a, you know, an email address I don't use normally, uh, which is kind of silly. I mean, you should, I mean, you'd think you could use like one email address for login for your phone and then another one for the Xbox, but nope, they're all tied together. Um, just, just something to be um, aware of. Uh, another thing is this phone has eight gigs of memory. Um, well, 500 gig, 512 meg of RAM, eight gig of internal storage space. A lot of that is taken by the um, OS, and apps have to go in that internal space. There is an SD card in there. Uh, you could do stuff to move other stuff around, like map data and stuff. You can put on your SD card. But if you're going to have tons of apps, this is not the phone for you. You're going to run out of space if you have tons of apps. Um, but again, entry to mid-level device, you, you know, if you're a person that has like a bajillion apps, you're probably going to have a high-end smartphone anyway because you're probably a power user. I mean, you're using the phone all the time. Um, so I don't see that as a big, big, big thing. Uh, another interesting thing is the back is very slippery. So um, if you're kind of, I mean, when you're pulling this out of your pocket or something, you might kind of slip. You might want to get a case for it. You'll have to just kind of fill it out when, and see. Um, it's not like ridiculously like, whoa, you can't hold on to it at all, but it's pretty slick. Uh, let's see, another thing coming from Android. Notifications. No notifications. There's like not a notification section. It's all based on these live tiles. So if I got a new email, I'd have to make sure I have my live tile up here and it would tell me that that particular tile would tell me, ooh, I have an email. But there's not a one spot place to go for all your notifications. So anything that you want to make sure that you know that, that something happened, you got to have on your home screen or your start screen here. Um, otherwise, you're just not going to know. So like, for example, I have this Windows store right here. Um, front and center, there's no reason I'm not going to the store all the time. The only reason why it's there is because if there's an app update, I want to know that there's an update. And the only way I'm going to know there's an update is if there's a number that shows up right there. So kind of silly. It'd be nice if you could like swipe this way and see like notifications or click a live tile thing. That might be coming, but it's not there. And if you're used to it on Android, it's not there on Windows. Just letting you know. Uh, also, there's no notification light. So um, if you get a text message and the screen's off you, or a missed call or something like that, there's no way to know. You have to turn it on and the lock screen will tell you some stuff, but still I think it's silly that you have to turn it, turn it on. Um, and it's not just the, you know, the cheap Windows phones, it's a bunch of them. They just, uh, uh, in fact, maybe it's all of them. They just don't have a notification light. Also, you can't have like reminders on your text. So like if you miss a text and you want a tone to be played like every two minutes until you pick up that text or view the text or see that you're missed call or whatever, can't do that. So severely lacking notifications. For me, this is gonna kind of be uh, hard to get used to because uh, for my job, I'm on call and I get paged out by text. So 
I can't have a reminder on my text and I can't have a notification light. So I'm just going to have this phone with me no matter what, all the time, volume cranked up to max, uh, and be checking it all the time. Uh, something super simple you'd think that they could do, but it's just not there. It's a critical issue that I think Microsoft should, should resolve as quickly as possible. Uh, that's, oh, oh, one more thing. I was going to say that's it for the negatives. Uh, one major thing, closing apps, okay? So, like, you can see all your apps that you have open by holding the back button. You think on this screen you could just X out or flick it up or something like that. You can't. So, for a while I was just like, I'll just let Windows manage my memory, you know, RAM, like all these apps open might take a lot of my RAM. There's not a whole lot of RAM in this phone. I'll just let Windows take care of it. I'm not even going to worry about it until one day my phone froze because it had too many apps open and I had to pull the battery. So now I have to make sure that I'm always closing apps. And if you forget to, you're just going to be getting going back, 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 back. You have to just keep on hitting back, 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 close, close, close. Okay, there, I finally got them all closed. That's a little ridiculous. There should be a little bit better app uh, uh, closing features there. Um, I, again, so I mean, I'm kind of hitting on all the negatives here. I mean, I'm not saying this is like these issues are critical or anything like that. I'm just getting these all out of the way, saying these are what I've noticed with the phone. Um, by far, the biggest issue I see uh, is the camera quality and flash. Um, everything else I can get past. This I can get past, but I, I'm kind of disappointed with the camera. I'm coming from a Galaxy S2 on Sprint. Um, that is a couple year old phone. Again, different, you know, that was a high end phone when it was released. This was never going to be a high end, you know, this was not a high end phone when it was released or anything. But picture between that phone and this phone, night and day. I wasn't expecting this one to be better. I was expecting it to be, though, a little better than it is. But in a pinch, it's fine. Um, it's just don't let people tell you that oh it's a Nokia camera it's better than everything or oh, it's not as bad as you think it will be no it's it's not good um, so oh and viewing angles they're, they're I don't I may have already hit on this um, they're they're not bad you just kind of you know they're they could be better I mean, you can see. So anyway, that that is what I have for the negatives of the phone. Now let's go on to the positive. Why would you want to use this uh, over like an Android device? Well, the live tiles, I really like them. I mean, you can if you set them up, it takes a while for you to get them to set up the way how you want them. Um, but you can really quick at a glance see what's going on. I mean, if you're like, I am in this little silly Superman shirt or whatever, and if I had like a notification on Facebook or any social media site or whatever, right, that would just tell me right there. I mean, it, it, I don't have one right now, that's why. I know my alarm's on for tomorrow, I know the weather, and then when it flips, it'll tell me the weather for tomorrow, 88 degrees, isolated. Uh, I can see new photos at a glance that, friends did. You know, I could kind of see real quick, just, you know, I mean, from one screen, you just kind of get a quick overview. You could do this on the Android and stuff like that through, you know, you know, customizations, getting little widgets or whatever. But, you know, it's super quick to set up on, on Windows Phone. So if you're wanting to get something set up quick or, or whatever. Uh, the thing about the live tiles, though, is they don't actually, you can't actually toggle something with them. So, like, like here, if I want to turn off my Wi-Fi, I mean, like an Android, like especially like a TouchWiz Android, you could just kind of like pull down and and turn off your Wi-Fi. You can't even do. You can't even just click this here. You have to go to your settings. But it's still pretty quick. I mean, and the battery life on this thing. I mean, I've been using this kind of heavy today, and you can see that you know we're almost at 11 o'clock at night, and we're halfway. It it's it's good battery. I mean, really, it's it's. Uh, I'm impressed with the battery. I mean, I don't worry about charging basically ever. So anyway, live tiles, cool. Could use some work on some things. I wish I could toggle stuff, but it's a really quick way to see what's going on with your phone. Uh, let's see. The biggest thing here, I mean, I have to say is like, there's so many different people that or different companies that make Windows Phone, you know, like HTC, uh, the 8X, uh, Samsung makes some. There, there's a bunch of them. But what Nokia does to differentiate itself uh, is their apps, the 
here drive beta, uh, here maps, uh, and also Nokia Music. Uh, these are amazing apps. So, like for example, Nokia Music is, uh, has a free streaming service. It's like Pandora, okay? So if you know what Pandora is, it's like a streaming deal and they that you can pay for it for no commercials or uh, have a free thing with free music but it has commercials. Interesting though, on Windows Phone 8, uh, there is no commercials on Pandora until the end of the year, so even in the free version. So, But the, the thing is with uh, Nokia Music, basically you can download your stations. So, for example, um, let's say, oh, what am I looking for here? Mix radio. Let's let's go get some fitness music. Some, uh, let's see, like something that you want to work out to while running or doing whatever fitness. So we do that. Uh, let it go here. Uh, aerobic mix. Click that. Make available offline. This is going to download that station, which is awesome. Because if you're on T-Mobile's $50 plan, or maybe a prepaid plan, uh, the $50 plan, postpaid, will give you 500 meg of high-speed data. So if you're like streaming music, Pandora, or whatever, all the time, you're going to run out of that, that uh, high-speed data. And even if you're not using the high speed, you know, like Pandora, you don't need like the blazing, like super fast connection, but it's your first 500 meg, period. And then you're done. Even if you're at that 500 meg on 2G speeds, which actually in my home here, I am on 2G. But if I were to stream this now on 2G, turn my Wi-Fi off, that would count towards my 500 meg. But I'm downloading this on Wi-Fi and I can listen to this and not use any of my data. Uh, these four stations here that I have, these are all downloaded, um, which is awesome. I, I play this in, like, I can play these in my car to, over Bluetooth, or if you have an aux jack or whatever, you can put that in there. And you know, another advantage of uh, Windows Phone is you can pin this to the start, so you don't even have to launch your app. I mean, it, it does launch your app, but it goes right to it. So if you had this here, you know, like. I already have some on here, like uh, one of them is like One Hit Wonders. It's kind of a funny station, kind of, you know, just songs that from bands that only had one good song and <laughs> that's it. Or at least one song that was popular. I shouldn't say just one good song. I'm sure a lot of them had good songs that just never made it. But anyway, so I'm just going to take that out of there. Um, so that's huge. I mean, if, if you don't have a huge amount of data on your plan, but you want to listen to, to radio, commercial free. I mean, you can even buy the tracks on there, but I haven't even messed with that. I just listen to commercial free. Offline, um, I'm on that $50 plan, so it works perfect for me. Um, and then, of course, if you do the prepaid route, you can go. You can be even cheaper. But the data um, coverage on prepaid is not as good as postpaid. Uh, T-Mobile will let you roam on AT&T postpaid, but not on prepaid. So, like for where I am in Iowa, basically, if I leave the town I'm in, Des Moines, or there's another town north of here called Ames, if I leave that area, I have no data on prepaid. So that's why I do postpaid. But if I did do prepaid and I wanted to make sure that my GPS still worked, uh, I could go into my here drive. Actually, that's not where I want to go. That's the actual app. I want to show you the, where am I going here? Settings. I'm going to go to the settings of here drive or actually even just maps, really. The maps, which is Nokia maps. You could download the maps to your SD card. Uh, I'll show you how to do it on the SD card here shortly, but uh, because by default it goes on the on the internal storage. So I, mean, I could download. I already have uh, maps downloaded here. It should show like the United States and Virgin Islands. I, really, no reason why I have the Virgin Islands on there. Just I was testing. Um, but anyway, actually, I'll probably just delete that. Just have the United States. Um, but so you can see, it's two thousand six hundred thirteen meg. Holy cow, I mean, if you put that on your internal storage, that would be insane, you know? I mean, uh, you'd have that and a few apps, and then your OS, and you're out. You're done. So, I suggest, if you do download the all, all the United States, and you can do it state by state, so if you just want to do your state, that, that saves you all kinds of space. But, if you want the whole thing, 
Uh, on the Windows Store, get this app called the Lumina, Lumia Pusher. Um, and it, it shows you like a bunch of stuff that you can download for your Lumia phone. Some of them aren't available in all eight regions, so, but beta versions, you want to get this Lumia, Lumia Storage Check Beta. Okay, I already have that on here, so. Um, Lumia Storage Check. This looks like just like the built-in Windows Mobile, uh, or excuse me, Windows Phone 8. Um, storage check with the one exception here you can change where you store your maps so before you even download a map because you can't move them once you download them which is silly but uh, you want to click here and set that to your SD card and then once that's set to your SD card and download your maps you will save them to the SD card where you'll have much 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 more space um, available um, so yeah that's the Lumia storage checks scroll over to the details and change it there so be sure to do that if you download those maps but anyway so like T-Mobile prepaid if you're you know the data coverage isn't that great and if you're out in the boondocks and you need to get home and you want to use your GPS this is great because you can just use the downloaded maps you don't even need data in fact for $130 I mean just selling this as a GPS with free map updates <laughs> I mean it's like a it's like a four inch GPS I mean you, you, there's some four inch GPS's that cost over $100 and that's all included in here so just that one I mean even if you didn't have cell service it, it's a you, you, you updated on Wi-Fi or whatever I mean that's just a great 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 feature you can do the same on Google and, and whatnot but you can only download like regions you can't download like the whole United States um, then again I mean how often do you need the whole United States in your your GPS probably not that often but you know it's there oh and here we go app closing problems so we just keep hitting back 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 close everything out la, 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 la. okay that's something they really need to need to address uh, so also the Bluetooth uh, um, it, car hands-free stuff is awesome like if you get a text message you can have it read it to you when you're driving It'll read it to you and then you can even reply over you know, with your voice so like it'll ask you if you want to reply and you just talk to it say what you want to say then it reads it back to you and asks if you want to send I'm sure you could do that with other phones with apps and what but this is built in nothing to do I mean it's just Built in, reply. It's great. Uh, the Nokia Drive or Here Drive or whatever it is, right here, Here Drive, that uses the maps. Yeah, well, that uses the maps that you download uh, for GPS, obviously. And it's turn by turn, like voice over Bluetooth is just great I mean it'll tell you in advance you know in a mile you're gonna to need to turn left or turn right you don't have to look at the screen so you can have your music playing with Nokia music over Bluetooth and have that GPS going uh, and have your phone screen turned off and <laughs> drive and get to wherever you need to go um, that that I mean I, I was pretty impressed with with uh, the navigation um, it's definitely better than anything else that I've used. In fact, my wife, who uh, um, isn't, I mean, she's, she's technological, she, she knows how to use tech, but she's not like, you know, me where I'm always dinking around with, or tinkering around, you know, tinkering around with, with tech and all that stuff. And when she saw this GPS thing, she, she said, this is the best phone you ever had. And, and spec-wise, it's not. It's definitely not the best phone I've ever had. Um, I came from a Galaxy S2, which is kind of old, to this. The Galaxy S2 beats this spec-wise and whatnot, and it's on Jelly Bean and all that stuff. So, but yeah, she was very impressed. I was impressed. Great features. Great features there. Uh, another feature, not just specific to you know this this particular phone, but on T-Mobile, some of them. Uh, do this is Wi-Fi calling and this phone I, this one actually mine came with it already installed um, 
So I think the new phones out already have it. If yours doesn't come with it, you might have to do an update, which requires a complete wipe of an, uh, or a factory reset of your phone, which is kind of annoying. But by now, they all should be coming with Wi-Fi calling. This is good if you're in a, a low reception area. Basically, it uses your internet to do the calls or whatever. There's like hardly any difference in functionality of your phone. You can turn it on and you wouldn't even really know that your phone's using Wi-Fi. It, it, it actually does sound better and dials quicker in my tests or whatever, but the one thing that makes me not turn it on, I mean, first of all, I have decent coverage where I am right now, besides even though I'm supposed to be in a 4G area at home here, it's 2G, but that's fine because um, I'm always on Wi-Fi at home anyway. But um, the thing about the Wi-Fi calling is there's no cell tower handoff, okay? So if you're at home making a phone call and, you know, you're like, oh, I need to go run to the store, but let me keep talking to you or whatever, whatever the reason, and you're leaving your place, your call's going to drop because it doesn't hand off the Wi-Fi to the, to the set, uh, cell tower. Um... How often does that happen? I mean, is that going to be a big deal for you? I, I don't know. I and mean, especially if you don't even have service where you are, you're not going to complain about that. I mean, what's it going to do? Hand off to nothing anyway because there's no service? So, <laughs> I mean, that's not a big deal. But for me, that's why I really don't, don't use that. So, um, I don't know. The, the, the phone, I mean, Windows Phone itself, it's like, I don't know what Microsoft's, I mean that they market it like how do they mar they they market it like it's like you can get in and get out and be done you know it's a, it's the fastest phone you could do there's no bull crap or whatever you know um, there's several things I could do faster on an Android phone and there's several things I could do faster on a Windows phone um, there's it's definitely not I mean it's <laughs> I just I don't know how to explain it it's just it's not like amazing. I mean, it's a it's a different OS. Let's put it that way. You can't say Microsoft copied anyone on this. Um, do I miss Android? Well, yeah, I miss the notification stuff. That's really about it. Everything else on Windows Phone, I mean, I, it's different. But I like how snappy it is. I mean, I'm not gonna say it's like snappier than any other phone out there because that's just not true but on this low end by today's standards hardware this thing moves at a, a good good clip I mean the the thing is I, mean, I have no complaints on its speed and it's a dual 1 gigahertz processor which is very piddly compared to today's super smartphones um, I mean, if you if you want to test it out, I mean, you're you're talking about 150 bucks. Um, you can go with a prepaid plan, thirty dollars a month. They have a plan with 100 minutes, um, five gig of 4G data, and what else was it? Uh, oh, unlimited texts. Um, I think that's they might have changed this. I'm not sure, but at one time it was only available at Walmart. I'm not sure if that's still the case for that plan. They also have another $30 plan. Probably not good for this phone, um, but 1,500 combined minutes and text messages and I think like 30 mega data. I don't know. That's not enough data really. But I mean, if you're on Wi-Fi, you can, uh, you know, get all your maps and music and stuff. Uh, Offline, I mean, maybe even 30 meg of data would be fine. I, uh, if you're if you're not really a heavy user or a power user, if you just use it to check your mail and whatnot, um, as long as you're not downloading attachments and stuff, because 30 megs really isn't that much. Um, so yeah, I mean, this would be the phone to get if you wanted to test out Windows Phone. It's it's what I like to call well, that's not my term by any means, but it's it's good enough. It's a good enough phone. And um, also, you don't have to use it just on uh, T-Mobile. There's other carriers, uh, um, mobile virtual network operators like P-Tel. It used to be called Platinum Tel. In fact, I think they're still called Platinum Tel, but their website's P-Tel. They have like a $40 unlimited plan, a $50 unlimited plan. Um, and, of course, their unlimited data is throttled after a certain point. But there's many of them out there. Um, I'm doing the $50 postpaid 
Uh, I paid $30 for the phone, $5 a month for 24 months. The only reason why I'm doing it that way is because work reimburses um, up to $60 a month for my phone service. So $5 a month spread out plus the plan, you know, works pretty much paying for my phone too when I spread it out. Um, also, if you do postpaid, sites like Top Cash Back or whatever, they'll give you um, $75 back for activating a T-Mobile line. Uh, I'll have a little referral link down in the description area at the bottom. If you want to click that, it gives and sign up for Top Cash Back. Uh, if you end up doing that, it gives me $10. Bucks. Um, you know, hey, okay, thanks, thanks for doing that. But there's other cashback sites too. So if you find one that gives more than seventy-five dollars, by all means, do that. But seventy-five dollars cash back on a hundred and fifty-dollar phone that you pay off over two years. I mean, <laughs> that's uh, that's a pretty good deal. So uh, on the whole, it's a pretty good phone. I mean, there's other phones in the price range in Android, like the Optimus L9 by LG. I mean, that's like around 200 bucks. You can get it sometimes, or 180 even, some when you're, you know, some special deal going on. So, I mean, there's Android phones that are similar spec and whatever that, you know, I mean, this, I don't know, Microsoft marks this phone as like the ultimate budget smartphone. Like nothing can compete versus it. And they even had a little video about how, you know, nothing is good and blah, blah, blah. Lumia 521 is the only phone under, you know, $200 that's any good. Not true. Um, not true at all. But there's lots of neat features on here. Check it out if you want to. You're out 150 bucks if you want to give it a try. If you like it, maybe you'd upgrade to something like a 925 or 928 or something like that later. But this would be a good phone to kind of get your feet wet, take a look around, see if this is something that you'd like. It takes a little while to get used to, but once you do, you start saying like, hey, maybe, maybe they do do some stuff better than Android. They certainly don't do everything better, but they definitely have some positive aspects. So anyway, I hope you find this review helpful and please ask questions. Thank you. Bye.